You have to believe in spite of what it looks like that our subject for today is, it's your season. Regardless of how the phone rings with bad news, you tell yourself, it's my season. And I want to utilize for a subtopic, no other way. No other way. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a time where there is great demand for saving time and greater efficiency of time. We are, we are ever conscious of seeking ways of getting the most for less. But it actually seems we're now getting less for more. <laughs> we certainly see that today we've gone from kitchens to kitchenettes. We used to have marinated steaks. Now we get minute steaks. Mm -hmm. We used to drive in restaurants. Now we have drive through restaurants. Lord knows we used to have more fresh food. And now all we seem to have is processed foods. We went from cooking to the stove to cooking with the microwave. If you can read the instructions, I'm all right with that. Even the word is being cut to preserve one's attention from sermons to sermonettes. Because the attention span of believers and parishioners has been shortened now. You know how it used to be in the church when the preacher would get up. About an hour, 15 minutes later, he was preparing to close. And then about another hour later, he was about on his fourth time saying, I'm about out of here now. But sermonettes do have its place in, in our society. We do desire them from time to time, and they are sometimes sufficient. But we have to be careful that too many sermonettes are going to create Christianettes. Christians that they can't walk but a half mile. Christianettes are ones that won't pay tithes or offering, but want everything that they can get. If you can't say amen, say ouch, it's all right. Christians not willing to build their ability to hang in there through life's ups and downs. You see, that's what the word of God helps us to be able to do. It helps us to, in these troubled times when everything seems to be uncertain, it gives you the confidence to say, to say that regardless of what it looks like, I believe it's my season. I believe that what God has for me is for me. I know that gas prices are high, but when I want to go someplace, and the only thing I got to get me there is my car. Come on, somebody. I'm getting in my car, and I'm going where God says I can go. Uh, I'm hungry sometimes, and, and I know food is high. And every now and then, I don't want a hot dog. Come on, somebody. Every now and then, I want a marinated steak. I want what I wanted. If God says I can have it, I ought to be able to get it. Come on. Mm-hmm. And lastly, if I believe that if God said it, that settles it, then sooner or later, my actions ought to speak louder than my words. Then I should start to resemble what my words have been saying. Am I, am I talking to somebody? You see, see, Christianity is all about the grace of God in every season. It doesn't matter that if it's a storm outside, I can walk outside and say, Father, you said that I could have what I desire and I could ask for it in your name. So in just a little while, can you pull the ring back just for a moment or two? Anybody ever prayed like that? 
Anybody ever had confidence enough to just say, God, look, I, I, I know I haven't done everything right, but, but, but can you show up on my behalf just one more time and, and, and allow me to understand that I'm still in your good grace? Come on, somebody. Have you ever thought about how bad somebody else has it and, and, and it hasn't come nigh your dwelling yet, but, but even if it comes nigh your dwelling, you will and say, God, yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear no evil because I understand that man born of a woman is but a few days and are full of trouble. But, but I'm going to believe that no matter what my days hold, any minute now, it's my season. Any minute now, I'm going to start seeing an abundance of my blessings. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. He gives us good things which we could never have ever thought we could earn. In our sins, we, we deserve death and suffering, yet we're still here. God gives us life and purpose. In our text, Paul states clearly, the grace of God does not eliminate the principles of choice and consequence. In other words, you can do what you want to do, but you're going to answer to what you did. Uh, you can do what you want to do, but you're going to answer for what you did. In other words, the scripture says quite eloquently, you're going to reap what you sow. So we must not lie to ourselves. We must be honest with ourselves that because of God's grace and forgiveness of our sins, we will not suffer any harm if we continue to choose sin. You're wrong. But when you choose the right way to go, and every now and then you slip up, you can say, God, forgive me. Watch this. For I have sinned. Help me to get back up with the confidence that I had before I failed. <laughs> Help me believe that even though the enemy tripped me up this time, I have enough strength and faith to get back up, dust myself off, and get back in line. Oh, I wish I had some transparent Christians here or even online that would admit to the fact that it's not easy being, being saved. It's not easy going through this life in the manner that God would have you to go through. But if you would just tell yourself, it's my season. Uh, and then when things happen, you say, this is just a little side thing. This, this is not the way that it's going to always be. I wish I had somebody that has had some bad days, that has had some rough days. And, and isn't it amazing that every now and then, and I double dare you right now to, to look back over your life and to see there was a time when you were going through hell but, but hell couldn't keep you because you had a heaven goal. Come on somebody. What we do in this life does matter beyond even the question of whether or not we will see heaven. Time will tell. Time will tell. Even though we're living in a time which looks like we're being shortchanged. Generic religion is not what's going to happen. Generic religion is not going to get you nowhere but generic faith. Every now and then, it's good to say, I'm just going through. But you're smiling because trouble don't last always. Come on, somebody. I'm going through. <laughs> But you're sitting here with your hands raised high in the, in the air because the last time when I was having a bad day, Come on, the same God came to my rescue and brought me out of my muck and my mire. Oh, come on, but, you, but you're sitting here and you, you're dancing and I, and I know that your bills aren't being paid and, and, you're, and you're dancing and, you're, and you got tears coming out of your face because he said in his word he would never leave me or nor forsake me. Every now and then I got to get somebody to touch and agree with me because it says they that wait. I need somebody to remind me that I'm part of a they situation. And when we wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he'll strengthen your heart. You got to tell yourself it's my season regardless of what it looks like it's my season regardless of how I'm crying right now don't pay any attention to my lying eyes my eyes are lying because they're crying but I'm going through what I'm going to get because I want something on the other side I refuse to let my problems overtake me especially in my season 
your, your car gone, but it's my season. <laughs> you got a notice on your door, but it's my season. It takes time for God to change some folks' mind. Come here, Pharaoh. <laughs> the people were already released. <laughs> They just had to go through some seasons of trials <laughs> for the Pharaoh to understand that these weren't his people no more. I wish I had a witness in here. See, the devil don't really understand what he's, God is doing in your life. So he's constantly messing with you and he's constantly causing issues in your life. But, but he doesn't want to accept it's your season. But until God snatches you away from him, you just hold on to your faith and tell the devil, it's my season. Pop your collar and say, you can't do nothing with me. Hey. See, we settle too much for what the enemy does and what the enemy says, but, but, but you got to make up your mind. Not the devil make up his, you make up yours. And then tell him something you know. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, but I remember when you, you was to be like this. <laughs> well, I remember when you used to be like this too. But let me tell you about your future. <laughs> Why you talk about my past? Do I have a witness in here? Uh huh. Why you telling me all about what I used to do? Guess what, devil? You right. I did it, and some of the times I was happy when I did it. But there came a day when I changed my thinking, when my mind became transformed, when I began to understand that I can't get the glory on the path I'm on. And every now and then, somebody that I had touched and agreed with reminded me, I remember when you used to, not remember when you were. Is there any used to folk in the house? I used to be this i used to be that but keep and keep on looking and, and look a little closer at me baby i'm not what i used to be i've been changed the angels in heaven have signed my name is there two or three in the house they can testify there was a time when it wasn't your season there was a time when you didn't know whether or not you were gonna make it but look at me now I was a part of a puzzle. Didn't know which piece I was, but he connected me with another piece of the puzzle. And then when I got touching that piece of the puzzle, he said, hey, you gonna be all right. And, and I told that other piece, you gonna be all right. And then before you know it, we was in the picture. Y'all better come on. Y'all better come on. I might have been in the box, but I wasn't part of the picture. Come on, somebody, you see what I'm saying? I was, I was fitted in a place uh, where I mattered in the picture and the vision of Almighty God. You might not have cared about me in the box, but you can't help it because I'm out the box now. Uh. All right, y'all stop pushing. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, Be not deceived, though. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that, that, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall to the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Point number one is a question. It says simply, what will you reap? What will you reap? See, listen, you can fool you. Some of the time. You can fool me. Some of the time. But you can't fool God. None of the time. You know how, how, how you were caught up in a situation and you said, God, if you get me out of this one, I won't do this no more. But see, God heard you say this one, but you actually meant these other three. laughing because y'all know I'm telling the truth. Your mouth say one thing <laughs> as if God is not listening to your heart. But God lets you get in those other three things to show you you really didn't know what you was asking me for on that last occasion. Come on, anybody ever been in a mess? Came out of a mess, glad you got out of the mess and found yourself in a worse mess. Uh, see, regardless of how you feel, there's going to be a reaping time, brothers and sisters, 
no matter where you are in your walk, there's going to be a time in your life when you are going to reap what you have sown. Ah. So the law of God's harvest is real simple when it comes to reaping. He said, we will reap what we sow. We will reap more than we sow. And we will reap after we sow. So uh, as hard as it may be, there is a real need for us because of the reaping thing to stick together, to consider where we are one to another. Let's remember from where the Lord has brought us from because the same God that brought me is the same God that has brought you. The same God that kept you is the same God that has kept me. Let's be patient and compassionate with one another. When was the last time, church? You look back over your lives and say, Lord, I thank you. Because had you not gotten me out of that, I wouldn't know how to praise you through this. Oh, see, 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 see. If you don't recognize that it's your season, you will figure it out, think, uh, uh, allow the devil to make you think that you will never have a season. Just because you're having bad times in your life, you think that God has left you. God has left you alone. But sometimes your problems teach you how to praise. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. I didn't know how to give God the right kind of praise until I had to go through something. And I, and, 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 and I keep bringing this up about my, my, my little grandson. When, when he was found in a state unresponsive, I didn't know that my faith could go so quick. Uh, but something has to happen to put you in the right understanding of where you are. And so, it's, so, so the question is, what will you reap? Well, at, at that point in time, I had to start telling God, God, I've hung in there a long time. I've had the opportunity to be down and out, but I've come back up and I've been able to praise you through but God, I got to be honest with you right now. This situation, I don't know if I have the wherewithal to get me through it. But if there is a time in my life where I'm going to reap what I have sown, I remember going to hospitals. I remember going to gravesides. I remember talking to somebody. And if it amounts to anything, can I reap? Can I reap a harvest right now? Can you open up your window of heaven and pour out a blessing to God be the glory right now? Not another minute. Not another hour. I'm not wanting it tomorrow. God, I need you right now. What will you reap? I reaped life for my little grandson. I know that it takes faith bigger than what you know you got. But if you start right now, the law of God's harvest again, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap more than what you sow. And you're going to reap after you sow. Therefore, don't let go of your faith, church. Because the enemy, watch this wants to expose you before you get blessed. Oh, please receive that. The enemy wants to expose you before you get blessed. Point number two is trials will expose who you are. Trials will expose who you are. Verse nine says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. See, I had to get myself together. Because that was a moment for me that I had never experienced in my life. And it exposed me. Pastor, teacher, under-shepherd, all of these titles don't make a hill of beans when your faith fails you. When you understand who you are, you can't understand it on top of the world. You can't understand it on the pinnacle. You can't understand it when everything is going good. You got to understand it when the enemy comes in like a flood. 
you have to have the expectation that the, that the Lord will lift the spirit and a standard uh, against what's coming at you. And then you say, like a flood, the Lord will lift uh, a standard. Uh, and I wish somebody would understand that today because to that day was me. But tomorrow could be you. This afternoon could be you. The enemy uses trials to expose who you are. Let me help you with this. And you can quote me on this. It's not a good look to have a weak faith during a heavy trial. It's not a good look to have weak faith during a heavy trial. Satan wants you to doubt your call, doubt your place, doubt your service. And if he can get to you before your blessing, he'll succeed unless you say, it's my season. Every now and then I got to go through so that I can appreciate what I'm getting to. <laughs> I got to have some things tore down so I can appreciate what God is building up. I wish I had a witness in here. Uh huh. See, real believers should anticipate trials. But in order to receive the best outcome, you have to prepare yourself for the best come out. Oh, y'all missed that. In order to receive the best outcome, <laughs> you have to prepare yourself for the best come out. If it's your season. I'm saying, if it's your season, I'm waiting on my outcome, but, but I'm letting my problem know I'm coming out of this. Come here, three Hebrew boys. You mean you don't bow down when the trumpet sounds for the king? He said, no. He said, well, then y'all got to go into the fire. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, trials will expose you. So the trial was for the three Hebrew boys as if, if I got to go into the fire. I know the Lord can save me. If I got to go through a trial, I know the Lord can preserve me. And if he don't, it's not that he couldn't. I'm all right with a no. Because I still have a yes on the other side. Oh, come on. That's a place where you can praise right there. There are going to be some no's in your life, but, but there is a yes because of your yes that you can rejoice in right now. But here the thing is, see, trials will expose you. The three Hebrew boys got put into the fire. But Jesus said, I can't let you go in by yourself. <laughs> I can't let you go through your problem by yourself. <laughs> so I believe I can hear the three Hebrew boys tell one of them, you take the alto. <laughs> you take the soprano. I know I can't sing high, so I'll take the bass. They were saying, it's your season <laughs> to be blessed. <laughs> We're standing in the fire. <laughs> But we're going to stand the test. God opened up the window and poured us out some no-heat fire. I wonder, is there anybody in here right now that understands it's your season? You might be going through the fire. You might be going through the flood. But it's your season. They might have shouted your name, scandalized your name, and, and perpetrated a fraud. But all you know is right now is, is the backstabbers can stop backstabbing because I, it's my season. Now, they can quit talking about me because it's my season. Is there anybody in the house right now that just say, it's my season? No matter what's going on, it's my season. See, I've been preaching about faith, preaching at faith, preaching to faith, preaching through faith. But, but you got to start preaching your faith. Ah. Have you noticed when you get tired, your personality changes? When you get tired of just being tired, you don't want nobody to bother you. You don't want nobody to talk to you. Now imagine the enemy trying to expose you in the midst of your trial. Okay, you're not who you think you are. Well, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, and, and you know, when you get tired, you can say things that you wouldn't normally say a lot easier. When you get tired, them thoughts change. Oh, how great thou art. Oh, I wish she would. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, the enemy is testing you according to where you say you are. Uh -huh. and, and, and you talking about this, your season, this my season. I'm waiting to be blessed. Okay, uh, let us say something today. See, the women saying, well, why is always a her got to say something? Why is always a her got to be messed up? The, the brother say, I wish you would. Come on, fellas. 
Faith makes you wonder when it's real how I got over. Tired faith does not have the same perspective as enduring faith. The text states, faint not in well-doing. Well-doing is bigger than really doing well. Ah. God has called us to well-doing, not doing well. Well-doing calls for reaping, believing until the time is right. When you talk about well-doing, you're talking about I'm going to hang in there because I believe my best is yet to come. Most of us put our efforts into just doing well, though. I got a car. I'm doing good. I got a house. I'm doing well. I got money in my pocket. I'm doing well. But, but, but what part of that is well-doing unto God? What part of that is you reaping and knowing that because I'm reaping the right thing or sowing the right thing, rather, I'm going to be reaping the right thing. Verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. In other words, that's stuff that's going to come apart. That's stuff that's going to fade away. I'm not building up my life on the treasures on this side that the moth and the canker worm can, can eat away. But I'm storing up my stuff for in heaven. My treasures are going to be in heaven where they can't be reached. It'll be there when I get there. The Bible said what you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We got keys to the kingdom. And I'm going to operate my key in a right now situation because somebody needs to know. Everybody needs to know. Anybody that we listen can know. It's our season to be blessed. Well, doing isn't just activity, but it's doing that which is worthy. And that is worthy of God's distinctive character. It's recognizing that you don't feel worthy, but the Lord says you are. Is there anybody here this, this afternoon that knows what it's like to feel worthy because God said so? That you can smile when people are looking at, well, how did she get the promotion? How in the world did she get that job, that car? Favor ain't fair, but it's my season. It's my season. See, 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 in the backdrop of, a backdrop of our lives, there's no worthiness that I can naturally aspire to because everything that I want to aspire to in this life is going to come to an end. But when I think, when I allow my cognitive ability to develop and wrap itself, hallelujah, around what is really happening in my worthiness, when I think... Y'all know you ought to hear it every Sunday of the goodness of Jesus <laughs> and all that he's done. This is an every Sunday quote. So when I start saying it, y'all supposed to start saying it. When I think <laughs> of the goodness of Jesus <laughs> and all that he's done for me, <laughs> my soul cries out. Come on, what do we cry? Hallelujah. Come on, come on. When your mouth can't say it, uh, your soul is thinking of the goodness. Uh, when you can't get it out your mind, your soul is thinking of the goodness. Uh, and when your lips can't articulate the right word, your, your heart goes ahead, go ahead and, and develops its own lips. Uh, and it cries out, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for saving me. Y'all ought to be glad about that today. Uh-huh. You've got to be glad about that. But here's the thing that's going to really pump us over and over to the top. It says, uh, uh, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, point number three, fainting will change your season. If you stop too early, you can stop just before your breakthrough becomes your breakout. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. You're you still in some stuff because you quit too soon. Because God said, you stop before I just was about to bless you. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. You have to understand that, that, that God has a time for your blessing. Come on, Mary and Martha. Jesus, you should have been here. But that wasn't my time. And it wasn't your season. <laughs> but when I showed up, you should have had some hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Martha said, uh, even now. <laughs> Anybody got an even now praise in the house? <laughs> even though you didn't come when I wanted you to. <laughs> even now. <laughs> I believe that my season is still available to me because I didn't quit. Fainting will change your season. I want to testify this morning that God makes you bloom in your season. Oh, blind bottom bear said, all I know is once I was blind, 
but now I see. <laughs> Y'all trying to talk about what I used to be, <laughs> but I'm talking about what I am right now. Any believers this morning had to hold on to their faith. Watch this just a little while longer. You almost got to the point where you were going to say, I, 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 this must not be for me. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to be what I thought I was supposed to be. But then you held on a little while longer. I tell you, if you be quiet sometimes, if you go to a prayer closet sometimes, if you cut some folks off sometimes, if you close some doors sometimes, if you shut the TV and the radio off sometimes, if you just go for a walk sometimes, sometimes the Lord will speak to you in a still quiet voice when you're focusing on his voice and all this extra noise every now and then you will be strengthened in your spirit you will become stronger in your walk and bolder in your talk there are some that believe that the tree you are won't produce anything somebody said that you look like this because of what you've been through no you just see a tree because my fruit haven't sprouted yet you looking at the sprouts on the tree but my fruits will say who I am. Come here long suffering. Come here temperate person. Come here person with love in your heart. Come here person with compassion. You might not look like it now but hang on in there. Don't you faint in your well doing because your due season is on the way. You are going to reap if you faint not. Your due season causes you to expect your due season. I know that God said what's for me is for me. I might not get it on Monday. Lord, I'm going to keep on praying. I might not get it on Tuesday, but I'm going to keep on praying. It might not come to me Thursday or Friday, but I'm going to keep on praying. But then on Saturday morning, when I wake up early in the morning, and I say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this day. And then all of a sudden, something comes over you that you hadn't felt in a long, long time. And it's something that's causing you to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know that if thou would withdraw thyself from me, where, oh, where will I go? Sometimes you got to wait on the Lord and he'll strengthen your heart. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, fainting is not an option fainting will change my season I'm going to wait on the Lord because he knows what's best for me you know sometimes you got to understand that God is holding back your breakthrough because he wants your testimony to be right he wants your praise to be louder he wants your worship to be true so the words say this is your season to be blessed God made you a promise because you stood the test. He said he's going to open up the window and pour you out a blessing. Is there anybody in here that understands this is your season to be blessed? Many people struggle with depression, but you need to tell them this is your season. Some people want to get stuck in the pit, but tell them it's their coming out time. It's your season. There are some people in here that's sad, feeling that they can't find a friend, but I came to let you know that God said through Jesus I'll be a friend for you I'll stick closer than a brother you need to tell somebody it is your season I've been blessed in the city I'm blessed in the field blessed when I come and blessed when I go well why is that pastor because it's my season I don't know who I'm talking about but it's because of you your families are going to reap because of you your communities are going to reap because of you and I our schools are going to reap because of you your church is going to reap because of you society anybody in here ever played spades and when you're playing spades don't get holy on me I'm gonna take I'm gonna bring you back and when you play spades and you look at your hand and you wonder what in the world you're gonna do with it I got five and a possible come on somebody I got five and a possible come on elder you when you got five and a possible but you already know that your hand alone can't win the game it's called you got a partner on the other side of the table and your partner can tell you well I got five and a possible two come on somebody I wish I had somebody in here who understands that if you're not playing space you're playing life and God said if look at your hand what does it look like because you didn't quit because you didn't throw your hand in but what is it God I got five I got five in my hand and I don't see no possible he said that's because you didn't count me in I wish I had two or three people that have played spades a time or two and understand that it's not just your hand, but it's what the Lord can do with your possible. You might not 
see it. Uh, you might not understand it, but have you ever been amazed and said, I didn't see me getting that one. Uh, I didn't know that one was going to be a good one. Uh, but it's good to know uh, that there are some people in our communities that are simply a possible. There are people in the church uh, that are simply a possible. But when you touch and agree, uh, God said, I'll be there in the midst. Uh, I'll be there with you. Uh, I'm going to partner with you. Uh, if you believe, uh, I said, if you believe uh, that this is your season go on and count your possibles because your possibles are going to be sure things because everything is possible in the master's hand all things are possible if they would simply believe it's your season it's your season it's your season it's our season touch yourself it's my season no matter what the devil is saying it's my season I got it because God said it I'm going to reap because I've sown there's a harvest way Waiting for me. There's a harvest waiting for you. It's your season. Don't let the devil tell you nothing different. It's your season. It's our season to be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are being blessed, encouraged, and motivated from the inside out. I've got a transformed mind, no longer conformed to the world. I'm going to give it over to God. I'm going to seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added to us because it's our season. Yes. Hallelujah. It's our season. It's our season. There's no way we can do it without him. There's no way we can do it without him. No way. No way you can live without him. No way you can walk and talk without him. No way you can have hope without him. But if you keep on believing, the Lord will make a way somehow. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Glory to God, our Father who sits high and looks low. It's wonderful to know that he cares to send a word such as this when things are kind of shaky, but he's not. And so he said, you hold on to me. I'll see you through. He said, I'm stronger than anything you'll face partner with me and let's make all those possibles count hallelujah somebody the doors of the church are open maybe there's someone who heard this word on today and feels the need to say I want a little more Jesus with well, a whole lot of Jesus to be received the word of God says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God he said you shall be saved he died on a cross and he's buried in a tomb and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. That's heaven and in earth. And now he's sitting on the right hand of God so that he can intercede for you and for me. Jesus is our high priest, not a low pastor, hallelujah, somebody, but a high priest sitting on the right hand of God, telling him what it is to be us. So much so that God honors the blood that Jesus uses to cover us. And so what I'm saying to your brothers and sisters, what you can't do, hallelujah, Jesus can. What you can't wash, the blood can. What you can't erase, the blood can. And what we're simply saying to you, is that if you say yes to Jesus right now with your mouth and in your heart, 
Jesus will say yes to you for everlasting life. There's no quick fix to everlasting life. There's no change to the plan. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Will there be one that will say yes on today? If you're in the chat, just say, I say yes. And every Sunday we look through those chats and we reach out to whomever the Lord directs us to reach out to. And you will be no exception. Will there be one? Yes. It takes time to rec recognize it's your season. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. All that is within me. Bless his whole. Come on, are you praying? Are you praying? His holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that that is within me. Bless his whole. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I pray that this message has touched you as it ministered to me. Uh, on last night, my wife rubbed my back because I was hurting, and I, it was a quick hurt. It was quick pain, and I didn't know where it came from. And, and I said, well, Lord, you said that you got me. If I stand behind this sacred desk, and you said you would hold me up. So I got to walk in that understanding. And thanks be unto God, I don't feel or look like what I've been through. Hallelujah. I'm going to let the ministers know all y'all names came in my mind. <laughs> I said, I said, who can I call? This was about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. All of them sleep. I said, who can I wake up and they'll still be in their right mind? <laughs> the Lord said, no, you better go to sleep, get you some strength. Call one of them if you want them. <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But praise God, praise God. Y'all know I'm just joking, but, uh, but I praise God for for their faithfulness in every one of you that are here today. Come on, rest to your feet. <laughs> Truly, this was an awesome time. I thank God that we were able to worship in the manner that we did. And again, I want you to not forget about Friday. Uh, we'll be over at Mount Gilead, and I'll remind you on Wednesday during Bible study. And uh, we're hoping to see you even there. We have an awesome time in Bible study, y'all, and we're talking about some good stuff. So come and be blessed. So as we prepare now to leave this part of our worship, don't leave here in the way that you came in. The word said, it's, or the message said, it's your season. And there's no way you can do it without him. So don't allow the enemy to make you leave here with problems that you brought here to leave. Leave them here. If something reminds you of a problem when you get outside, tell it, it's my season. When you get home and if there's a problem that's there at your house, tell that problem, it's my season. And then walk like you believe it. Like you believe it. Confidently. God got this. Is that all right? All right. We're not leaving here with the same problem. We're not leaving here the way we came. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. Your matchless name, Jesus. We're so thankful that because of you, we can declare and decree that we are no longer victims, but we are victors. Thank you 
for giving us the understanding that we can, we will, and we must continue to walk in your word, walk in your will by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ha! Your word said we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. So breathe on us, Lord, as we endeavor to move now to our various homes. Breathe on us the power to stand through it all. Breathe on us such an anointing that the enemy would recognize favor and flee. I thank you in advance for how you're going to move on the youngest to the oldest. God, we are so grateful for you. Grateful for this word. I pray seal it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Don't let our trials show who we really are and then not be who we really are. We're holding up the bloodstained banner right now. Jehovah Shammah, we know you're going to be where we are. And so we thank you for being already there. And so now we pray that may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest rule and abide with each of us until you, dear God, desires to bring us together again, whether it be here on earth or your great city called heaven. We say to you and to you only, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord who loves the Lord say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Go in peace, God's people. God bless you. Peace.